Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Ubrit Workshop. I'm preparing a video uh, where I introduce a selection of cutters to use with the X-Carve CNC. And as I was doing that work, I suddenly realised I've not spoken about the detail about cutters for writers in general. In particular, how to choose how much you can cut at a time, uh, or what speed you should use, and so on. So in this relatively short video, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of how you set the parameters of writer speed, depth of cut, and so on. Now, one of the most important things, particularly if you're uh, doing handheld writing, is to understand the difference between a conventional cut and a climb cut. In a conventional cut, the direction of travel of the router is the same as the direction of travel of the cutting edge. So in simple terms, that means if you've got the writer held in your hand and your cutter is spinning, then you should be on the left-hand side of the workpiece. So there's the workpiece and you're working down that way. And this means that uh, if you've got your workpiece set up in your bench, uh, then that should be on the right-hand side of where the writer is and the writer should be being moved towards you. Now the climb cut is the exact opposite. It's as though you're working with the workpiece on your left and the writer on the right. And the reason this is dangerous is because uh, that writer is going to try and start galloping towards you and you may lose control. And if you're on a writer table, this is even more important because you may be feeding a piece of wood into the writer with your hands. You shouldn't really do that. You should have push sticks, uh, but then uh, the writer grabs that piece of wood and either takes it away from you or throws it back towards you and it could have alarming consequences. Now on a CNC there are some advantages in using a climb cut. First of all the CNC should have the ability to control the writer and ensure that it doesn't run away with itself. Now the advantage of a climb cut with the CNC is that it leaves a better edge. Now let's examine how much material you can take away with each pass of the writer and this applies to both uh, the handheld writer and the writer held in a writer table and also uh, to the CNC machine. So how much can you take at a single pass? If you're doing a channel as I was doing earlier uh, there is a rule of thumb and that rule of thumb says that the depth of cut should be no more than half the diameter of the cutter. Now, I've tried to find out where that rule comes from, and, and I can't find any sources, but it's a, a general convention that I found everywhere, that people quote this, and I've got no reason to uh, dispute it. And I imagine a number of factors come in, not least of which is the uh, strength of the bits, because if you've got a, a carbide bit, uh, particularly if it's solid carbide, it can be quite fragile. So what now happens in the case where you've made a first pass and then you want to take a, a second pass? And that second pass is uh, perhaps the same depth, um, but you're going into the material a little bit more. We need some sort of rule of thumb for that too. Well, actually, it's the same rule of thumb. Uh, now, this is where I'll introduce you to two terms. One is pass depth. That's the depth of the uh, new cut into the material and the other is step over and that's the amount you're going into the material to the left or to the right if you're using a handheld writer. If you're uh, working with a CNC uh, that step over is the amount of movement that you've made in the X or Y direction or combination of both uh, before you start your travel. And, and that area of new material being cut should be no greater than it was in our very first example when we're cutting the channel. So no greater than the product of the cutter diameter and the cutter radius. Now what about the optimum rate uh, that you should be moving the router uh, or if you're using a CNC machine, instruct the machine uh, to do its cutting. At what rate should it be doing? How many feet per second? How many millimetres per second? How many feet per minute? Whatever units you're using. And this is where a new term comes in. It's called chip load. And chip load is defined as the amount of material that a single flute on your cutter will take 
for each revolution of the cutter. And so it may be a very, very tiny amount. Let me show you what I mean. Now let's look really closely at some of the, the chips that are still left in this, this hole here. Now in particular, I want to try and single out one, one of these pieces and try and describe to you why it's important. Well, I've probably got a couple there, but you may just be able to see uh, there's a piece on my finger here. Now that piece I've got there is a piece of wood that was probably taken out by one of the flutes on the cutter and it did it in one pass. And so uh, every time that cutter was spinning, it was taking out a piece about that size. Now there are two ways of expressing uh, chip load uh, as a formula. Uh, the first one is that chip load equals uh, the feed rate uh, divided by the cutter speed times the number of flutes. Perhaps it's easier to see it defined in a different way and that is to put feed rate on the left hand side because its feed rate is something we want to know what to set it at uh, and therefore uh, knowing what the chip load is uh, will give us a clue. So feed rate equals the chip load times the cutter uh, speed uh, times the number of flutes. Now if the manufacturer of the particular router cutter tells you its chip load, from that you'll be able to make a judgment as to uh, the feed rate versus the speed. Now th this may not seem to be very important but it is when you're doing CNC work because with a CNC you don't have that very close feedback between either the router which is in your hand if you're doing handheld writing or the piece of wood which is in your hand if you're using a writer table. In both those situations uh, you do get some feedback. You can hear how the writer is performing, you can feel whether there's any vibration and you can smell if there's any burning and, and you'll make adjustments accordingly. But when you're using a, a machine which is guided by a computer program which you've set up, you've given it the parameters, uh, then this is where uh, you need to have a little bit of knowledge and that's where chip load comes in. So knowing what the chip load is, you can then make a judgment as to what the feed rate should be uh, and also what the speed of the writer or spindle should be. And what I've just covered about chip load leads me on to my next video which is CNC specific for the X-Carve where I'm looking at tweaking the X-Carve, getting it serviced and then doing a few tests. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.